You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Podcast. True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, the Miss V Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community and forum, and the Peppermaster, hot pepper sauces made from fresh farm ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. Good morning and hello, kids, and welcome to season three and episode. I'm actually not quite sure this morning because, to be totally honest, I don't have it all together. (laughs) I think it's 153 of the Eager Beaver Day, the Daily Beaver Beaver Morning Show here on the Cryer Media Network. Today, recording day is Friday, June 30th, 2023. And uh, I think it's going to be a nice day here at the Beaver Lodge. I don't know. I haven't had a chance to check the weather yet. <laughs> as with, I'm your host, the Eager Beaver, pronouns he, him, hey, Mr. Beaver, eh? And with me, as always, is my dear friend, Mr. Grizzly. Of course, a big thank you goes to our podcast founding sponsors, The Pepper Master, The Miss V Mysteries from Corbin Moon Publishing, and CanadianTarot.com. I see uh, Kit Ellen says, I like Mr. Beaver's shirt. Well, then, please let me, uh, there you go, give you a full look. Vaccinated. Uh, turn this way, yeah. Yes. There you go. And uh, here, I'll, I'll give you a twirl, too. Because, right? I mean, when we're objectifying, we ask them to give give us a twirl, right? (laughs) Speaking of which, there's a segue. (laughs) Uh, We have a very special Friday morning beaver bite for you. I like that a hole, Jenny Bouchard. Yes, yes, exactly. That's where I, I, well, I'm sure that's not where it comes from, but that's that's the, the first time it popped into my head. Because I, I had never heard it before yeah. until that moment. Yeah. Um, but apparently oh. there was a time when it was a thing. <laughs> um, if you're wondering why it is that I am a little out of sorts, kids, um, well, yesterday after the show, yours truly uh, went out to play some tennis uh, and played a singles match. And then there's a, yeah, it wasn't anything like that over here. Uh, played a singles match, and uh, then there's a group of three uh, elderly gentlemen um, with whom I, I play a doubles, which, like, it's a fun doubles. I mean, it's, but we're playing doubles, and we mm. we don't try to hit too far away and that type of stuff. You know, I mean, it's not that they can't move. I mean, they can, but, you know, it's, uh, we're talking like men in their 80s, right, who are still playing tennis. Oh, yeah. Um, 
let's not kill each other. But it's always a good time because, you know, pardon? Pardon? Let's not kill each other. Well, exactly. You know, you're not doing big, big smashes and stuff. And um, there's a massive so, and, delay. And, you know, and sometimes, and sometimes we try to send it to them. And, you know, and, and sometimes, you know, you know, try to make sure if the balls are going slow enough that we can. But I mean, they can play. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, they can play. It's like we, you know, every time we like take the break between like the breaks are five minutes and we have conversation rather than. <laughs> rather than one <laughs> as the rules say um but uh it's always a it's always a really good time and you know we get to talk about stuff and you know it's it's good to spend time with people older than you because uh, you learn some stuff you learn a lot of stuff um so uh but about uh we play from 10 30 to 12 30 and somewhere around 11 45 i wasn't feeling right here and it was just feeling like I, I wasn't flexible. Like I thought like it was like a cramp, but a weird kind of cramp because it wasn't hurt, hurting like a cramp does let that stinging hurt. It was more like mm-hmm. when your belly gets full of gas and it's distended and it hurts. Mm-hmm. So it was, it was that, but I, I didn't figure out what it was wrong. So we finished the match and I biked home and then I sort of like just, I need to lay down. Uh, and about three hours later, Ralph and I had a conversation. Mm. It was more like my stomach was like, fun. hey, Beaver. It's like, yeah, stomach. What you got in there? Uh, breakfast. Oh, I, he won't be. Needing Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you won't be needing that today. Uh, so, um, not that much research has gone into today's show. I have some old stuff, and uh, and it may be a little haphazard as I'm finding stuff. So please, and I arrived late, so thank you for your patience, uh, and thank you in particular to Kit Connie, who did uh, a big sister thing and uh, brought me some Gatorade. Oh, <laughs> I could replace the electrolytes, and thank you to my beaver sweetie who took very good care of me and made me some uh, bland rice. A little bit like kanji style to try to get some food into me, so I'd have a few calories. Yeah, that's that's the ticket, eh? It's 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 rice and mint tea, peppermint tea. He also usually. made mint tea, or or a, a ginger tea is also very good as well. Ginger or a peppermint tea is very very good too for an upset stomach. Yeah. Um. So I, I was uh, rifling through some stuff, and I I came across something here that I I think is a little bit of. Well, nostalgia, if you will. I'm going to hold this up on camera in a second here. It's it's in really rough shape. It has wax on it and coffee stains. and uh, But this is kind of a, a reminiscent thing from 25 years ago. Mm. Think about that. This is 25 years old. Oh, my. <laughs> Windows 98 <laughs> starts here. Wow, I remember that. 90, that's 25 years ago. Jeez. How trippy is that, right? Oh my god! I think about that. I was starting like, my first job, my first real job. Is it? Well, I was after university years old at the time. Yeah. First real job after university. They were all real jobs before my first real job. Of course. Yes. Your first adult job. Yes. 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 It just it it kind of trips me out. It's like where did the last twenty five years go? I remember the build up to Y two K, right? Right. That that build up was for years. Y two K, Y two K, and then it came and gone, and here we are. 23 years later mm-hmm. I'm like in the last three years have been a bit of a blur uh, I think globally yeah many people would say the same thing they're just like uh, remember the other day that was three years ago but it was what? more like oh, one that's right, yeah. year <laughs> yeah it just seems you know keeps blending in um and and look we're we're mostly back to the before times for the most part Not for everybody. There are still some members of society who are immunocompromised, who are taking extra precaution. And hey, I got no issue with that whatsoever, man. Do what you got to do to protect yourself. Mm. But I don't think we'll ever go back fully to the before times again because there's been this cultural shift. Yeah, you can't. It's just, it's everything is different now. Yeah. And it's going to stay that way. Yeah. It's never going to go back to the way it was. Yeah. And all those selling you that... Mm. Yeah, they're lying to you. Speaking of those selling you that, um, on the 
lighter side of news, um, it appears that someone got a makeover. Yeah, not a good one either. <laughs> I mean, there's been many memes, and of course, uh, our, our good friend David Mosscrop uh, started it, I think. But uh, the be- the one I heard best yesterday was, why is he turning into Katie Lang? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was... <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and here's, you know what I did, I did put it on Twitter and then I thought after, should I do that? And yeah, because you know, it's my, I have a sense of humor, <laughs> mm, of course. but sometimes there's a sense of humor for the public. And then there's sense of, <laughs> and I thought, you know, know your audience, yes. right? Well, because a few days ago, as we said on the show, Pierre, uh, was in front of the cameras and said something like, you know, yes, I believe that everybody who's gay, lesbian, and, you know, in the rainbow, uh, should live freely and have rights. And, you know, and I'll be getting back to you in a few days to tell you how it is, you know, that we're going to mark or celebrate that or however, whatever it is. Um, and, uh, he didn't march in pride though. Huh? Well, he didn't march. No, he didn't. I guess he didn't pick one to march in. Uh, and then the party released those pamphlets in the, the Portage Lisger by-election, uh, mm-hmm. saying how terrible it was that Max Bernier, when he was a CPC MP, actually marched in a pride parade. Probably something he wouldn't do today. Um, mm-hmm. But <laughs> I like Jen. Tried to do an image rehab, and they said no, 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 no. no. <laughs> I love it. Ah, uh, uh, the morning core. Fully caffeinated. Oh, that's what that look was. That's yes. what that look was. So anyway, um. The thing is, is that um, I, I couldn't resist. I couldn't resist mm. because I'm thinking like, as soon as I saw the Katie Lang thing, I'm thinking, so is Pierre Poliver transitioning to Katie Lang, that thing he said he would do to mark and celebrate pride that he'd get back to us on? Because um, <laughs> so far, <laughs> yeah. Just yeah. asking questions. Just asking questions. <laughs> Linda M. Katie Lang were all of it better. <laughs> yeah, poor Katie Lang indeed. <laughs> I think I think a better look for Pierre if he wanted to increase his likability was to make over to look like the other Katie. Mac, Mac and cheese yeah. Katie? Is that yeah. yeah. That might up his popularity. I mean, he'd be orange. Like his his hero? I'm just saying. <laughs> just just saying. <laughs> Ooh, maybe maybe I that was the other joke I was saying that in the <clears throat> kit gen. <clears throat> I said I had food slash wood poisoning yesterday, and then Kit Jen goes, she puts that little Morticia Adams like having the tea, wood poisoning. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I see where you went with that. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh man! Well, I see something in the chat asking: uh, Can PP? This is from uh, from Saucy Seawood, Shirianne, and can PP belt out "Hallelujah" like Katie Lang? Well, no, I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to go there. No, no. And you know where I was going, right? Yes, I think you know you where know I was going about. Yep. <laughs> I, I see you. I see you. you. You can sit next to me and you can stay. <laughs> you, I see. You, you shouldn't that. play that song at a funeral or a wedding, okay? Let's just leave it at that. We've discussed it before. We're not going to discuss it today. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Don't play it at a funeral so or a wedding. Let's see what we. Oh, well, wait a minute. That's not. Well, that's really weird. What? Oh, I guess. Hmm. Well. <laughs> is that the makeover or is that another one no that's not the another yeah that's oh, june 16 that's really yeah, weird so that, no he stopped wearing his glasses i think he's trying to get rid of his tell his tell is always how he adjusts his glasses when you know he's about to tell a lie yeah because he doesn't have an answer or the, so he adjusts his glasses or the gulping on the saliva yeah 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 take a drink of water adjust the glasses gulp 
that was the thing with Andrew Shear. He'd always take a drink of water. Stephen Harper. Too. Like, I mean, these guys are so transparent. Stephen Harper too. Oh yeah. 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 Uh, but that's Stephen where they get Stephen it from. Harper their puppet master. The lie, not before. That's right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> it was after he would lie and then take the, some people would drink the water before the lie and he, he drank it after. Uh, and, uh, and him was his, uh, let me be clear. And then as soon as let you me said, let me be clear, you knew that whatever was going to follow was going to be as clear as Bullshit. mud. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let me let be me clear. Be clear. Was like, okay, now watch I'm, me mess this up. <laughs> let me be clear. I'm about to tell you a big fat whopper of a lie. I'm going to conflate a whole bunch of stuff. All right. Yeah. Um, so, well, this is the one of, this wasn't the photo I was looking for though, however, but we'll put this one up. Oh, you want the one from yesterday? And yeah, the conference? one from yesterday, because that's the one that got everybody talking. Because this one made it onto City News, of course, on the sixteenth. Mm-hmm. But City News is the his fluffer channel. Yeah, right. Oh yeah. yeah. So, and this one. It, well, he looks even more like Milhouse now. You think when so? Milhouse takes his glasses oh, off. Oh yes. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so this one is Oliver sports a new summer look aimed at improving likability. Uh, I will look Amen. for the the one from yesterday though. However, because well and and that's the thing right is you have these tweets going on you know it's like oh god he's such a douche and i can't stand him and his voice makes me want to climb the walls but now that he's adopted this miami vice type thing well gee i'm gonna vote for him now <laughs> and then meanwhile you have all these people online saying like this well Trudeau's only prime minister because like most of the people voted for him in the last two elections only because he's good looking Yes, that's that's the reason people voted for him. Nothing to do with any of the policies that have been enacted. Like this. Nothing to do with lifting children out of poverty. Nothing to do with ten dollar a day daycare. Nothing to do with you know, oh come on. Ten dollar a day daycare, which uh, the conservatives, including Pierre, the funding bill voted for uh, unanimously. So I'm wondering mm-hmm. it is how it is he's going to cancel the daycare that he promised he that would when he just voted unanimous. to fund it. Yeah. I guess he's just going to let the con- I guess he's just going to let the provincial premiers redistribute it to those who don't need it. Well, Dougie's sitting on 22 billion right now. Right. Right. Pay the nurses. God damn it. Pay the nurses. Pay the teachers. The hell is wrong with you? Just I you know, it you get so frustrated some days. I have a lot of days where I get frustrated. Um, as we talked about the other day when I said, you know, I just have to unplug from everything for a little while. And it's no secret, I'm going to be on vacation starting um, Friday. Next Friday, as of 4.30 p.m., I'll be on vacation for three weeks. But don't worry, I'm still going to deliver shows. All right. Uh, some of them we may have to tape a couple because there are going to be areas where I, I will be venturing where there will be no internet oh, okay, connectivity. Cool. Sure. So uh, we'll we'll have to tape a couple of things, and I've got to record some ASMR shows because I, you know, I, I was thinking, uh, and I, I said to the to the the, the folks on that channel, uh, you know, uh, I don't know if I want to record them because it doesn't feel as authentic. Because I like to do it live off the cuff and have people in the chat, but I thought, you know what, I'll record it live, which is what I do. I don't do any edits. It, it'll be just a stream of consciousness, a thirty minute thing. I won't have anybody in the chat because it'll be a pre recorded thing. But I still want to be able to put content out for people because I know that there there are a certain number of people that really do look forward to that Monday evening chill zone. So uh, I'll continue. You know, I'm going to record uh, some shows over the next couple of days to have ready and prepped to to to, uh, to debut at 9:30 p.m. on Mondays. And we, like I said, we might have to record a show or two, but we'll figure that out later. Now uh, you're you're coming to town. Uh, is are you coming in tonight or tomorrow? Uh, will be coming in either. I think it's going to be later tonight. Um, Alex's yeah, okay. family is stopping over for for supper first. Okay, and 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 we're, we've got that, that thing with Dean this afternoon too. Yes, so. yes, as well. Um, okay, so here we go. This is the one I was looking for. Ah, uh, this is the one. Yeah, that's it right there. Okay, here we go. So this is the one that got <clears> everyone <throat> talking. Now. One of the things that I found interesting about this one is that we're talking about PP, mm-hmm. the way, well, the the nation, the, that was the discourse. Uh, a lot of the way that people talk about women, mm-hmm. what they look like, yeah. how they're dressed. That's a first. That's a first. Hmm? 
news. And they're that's the ones first. that kept on bringing it up, right? Because you only like Trudeau because he's handsome. That's the only reason you're voting for him. So, but that's the only reason you're voting for him. But, you know, uh, Andrew Scheer tried, uh, you know, to go casual and that didn't work for him because like he couldn't shake hands. And then uh, Aaron <laughs> O'Toole got photoshopped to be given like, you know, like a flat stomach, Ben Johnson legs and flat stomach and pecs. And, and now um, we've got this guy uh, bringing back the Preston Manning. Yes. I mean, wasn't that oh, yeah. when yeah. Preston Manning got his contacts, didn't he also do the turtleneck mm-hmm. thing? Well, that's just a black t-shirt. He's not wearing a okay. turtleneck here, but yeah, but, but Preston did but, do but that. But not the yeah. shirt tie, right? Yeah. Um, now this is not the great quality photo. It's a little blurred. No, like this. it's a cap. It's a screen cap, right? Yeah. From from a from a press conference. Um, but but David Moskov. Oh shit! I forgot to get bananas. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and also, and then honestly, he looks like a corpse a mortician gave up on. <laughs> and then the other ones I saw is like he's. How does he look older than Trudeau? Yeah, that that's a good question because he. He looks really old in that photo, which I mean, looking at this picture and I'm, I'm not going to make, I'm not making fun of it uh, or him. Uh, I'm not even going to go down the hate pathway with this one, but in that photo, he looks considerably older and not the healthiest. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm posing a legitimate human question here. Is he ill? Uh, Cause he doesn't, he looks, he looks ill in that photo. And, and I'm I'm going to lean into it here a little bit, bear with me, but um, I've seen friends go through chemo that look just like that. I'm not suggesting that's the case here, but I'm giving you sort of a comparative mm-hmm. uh, uh, image to 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 think of. Yeah, it this uh, like this I said, he, he's look- he's kind of gray and sullen. But, but and, that's what I'm saying. Now maybe it's the lighting. What I'm saying, yeah, in in this case, it, it's probably because it's a screen cap and like because it's a little fuzzy and it's a little gray. The colors are not as vibrant. I mean, you can just you can tell by the red on the the red on the maple leaf flag. It's it's sort of muted. I'll put it back up here. Yeah, it's very it's muted. muted. So the whole image is muted. So I wouldn't go by the the grayness, the grayscale, anything. Yeah, okay. But, so you know, it's, but the, it's... the bags under the eyes and. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the furrowed brow from that, in that particular photograph, if I didn't know better, the straight Charlie, I would assume Mm -hmm. again, if I didn't know better, I would assume he was ill. And yeah, yeah, it's, uh, but we're talking about him the same way people talk. It just struck me yesterday while people were talking about it. It's Mm -hmm. like, wow, we're really just objectifying this aren't we? But here's the thing. Um, This type of makeover is usually reserved um, closer to an election date Mm -hmm. when the Mm -hmm. party is sort of like, you know, brand new, fresh, vibrant energy. We're still a year and a half away from an election. He's only nine months in. Yeah. He's trying to reinvent himself already. Like I said, don't be surprised if he's gone by September. This is way early. Well, he's trying to remake his image because, well, he's got a terrible image. Mm -hmm. And he's forged it himself. He forged it in fire. He has no one to blame but himself. And, well, I was thinking, well, maybe this, Mr. Grizzly, is the reason for this. Remember when I we had the conservative leadership run mm-hmm. and I was encouraging people to buy memberships? Mm-hmm. Well, Douglas, your membership with the Conservative Party of Canada will be expiring tomorrow. Renew your membership now and help Pierre Polliver bring home the freest country on earth. So was that you want mm-hmm. me to renew my membership? I mean, PP even got a Wait makeover a just for me? Oh. Sorry, poodles. I only bought a membership so I could leave PP off the ballot when I voted for the leader. Best ten dollars I ever spent. <laughs> can, can we reread that? Your membership with the Conservative Party of Canada will be expiring tomorrow. 
Uh-huh. Why does this, why does this expire? It's not a driver's license. Well, it's a one year. Renew right? your membership now and help Pierre Poliver, Poliev, Poliver. Here, here we go. Bring home the freest country on earth. What the hell does that mean? Bring home the freest country on earth. Who writes this shit? Because that is the stupidest thing I've read in a long time. <laughs> Bring home the freest country on earth. What? What the hell does that even mean? No, I'm, 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 I'm not joking here. Like, I'm, I'm really questioning the, the, the thought process of somebody who would write something that fucking stupid. Because it's fucking stupid. Bring home the freest country on earth. We're already here, and we already are one of the freest countries on earth. So what the fuck is he going on about? I just, just bring home more powerful paychecks. We're going to cut your taxes. No, what he's going to do is kill all social programs by eliminating CPP and EI and say, fuck you, you're on your own. Mm. EI and CP, CPP are not taxes. CPP is a retirement fund so that you will have something when you can no longer work. EI is an insurance program all working people pay into. Not all working people, I should say most, many working people. A vast majority of working people pay into EI so that if you find yourself suddenly out of a job, you've got money to come in and cover you. It's employment insurance. It's not a tax. Mm -hmm. But he'll cut it. He'll cut it. He'll privatize everything he can. Oh, yeah. No doubt. No doubt. And of course, and he'll do it with our public funds, too, right? Which, which is what Doug is doing here in Ontario. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And of course, um, well, PP, for all his makeovering, um, for some reason, uh, decided he was going to keep the, the Trump male crotch goblin hair i don't know why he thinks that slicked back greaser thing yeah i it seems to be a thing with this movement i don't know what it is but it's a uh, really not a good look no, no it's really not a, just uh, when you're already um, selling rage, any mm -hmm. type of look that pulls the face back. Yeah, it's not good. Not good. Not good. Just accentuates it. It's just the way it is. <laughs> um, ugh. and then uh, and then there's a whole bunch of stuff. You know, there 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 have been memes of Pierre side by side with Lucy Van Pelt from Peanuts. <laughs> of course mostly because of the eyes um so you know it's a it's the i'm a weasel look oh man we're terrible we are terrible okay so anyway that was pierre but my thing my thing about that like i said the main point with all of this we're having a lot of fun with it but it's um it's just how early it is in the campaign yeah, but well, and, and again it's not even really a campaign yet. How can it be? Well, I mean, in his campaign, his he campaign. gained this out first, right? He's running for prime minister, overwhelm, shock and awe with the leadership thing. Mm -hmm. Come in, start punching some journalists, you know, get a couple of street cred, like get all those people going rah, 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 because role number one is to try and absolutely take out the, you know, swipe the PPC, swipe mm -hmm. its legs out from under them, uh, which he hasn't done successfully. Fl flood the zone with bullshit, right? Yeah, but I mean, it's he's really trying to recapture the the three to seven percent that can go PPC. Mm -hmm. He's really, really trying to recapture that because he needs that, um, or else he can't win without it. Um, and that's what we saw in Portage Lisker. Him doing all of that, right? Them going all out, guns blazing against PP against Bernier, and without any mandates and without any of that stuff, Bernier still picked up seventeen percent. And then they go, okay, well, we kept him under twenty. Yeah, but. They hit 20 when they were really, really mad about those issues. Those issues are starting to get on the back, you know, in the in the rearview mirror. And he still got 17. 
Now, you can maybe attribute a few extra points to him because he's the leader. Well, yes. But you didn't wipe him out. You didn't wipe him out. He's here to stay. And so long as he's he's here to stay, he's raising money that you think you should be going to you. That's what all this is about. That's what this conservative party is freak out. Because remember, the first they love money. More and than the Freedom anything Convoy else. showed how much money was going the other way, not to them if they weren't mm-hmm. going to back them. And they decided they wanted their cut. So they're going after it. They really want to take Max out, but they didn't do it. They took it. I won't say they took a shot at the king, <laughs> but they took a shot at the pretender and they missed. Mm-hmm. And now the pretender is now extra motivated. Didn't work. It didn't work. He's got problems. He's that he's finished. Going through some things. Yeah, they're they're about to experience all the things, uh, and good on them because they've earned it. Hmm. Well, they had it coming. So, um, they effed around, and now they're going to find out. Mm-hmm. And it's um, you know. There are going to be the Tamara Leach trial is going to happen at some point. The Chris Barber trial is oh, going to happen at some point. The Coots trial is going to happen at some point. And that's that's really going to be telling because it is really going to destroy them. Because you know damn well uh, those people will throw that party under the bus in a heartbeat. Because the party would throw them under the bus in a heartbeat. So the it's party like, has. oh yeah, they already have. Yeah. So it's like, oh, so you're going to screw me over. I'm going to screw you even harder. There's it's, a lot of Pawlowski's in that group. It's going to be interesting. There's a lot of Pawlowski types in that group. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They may not all be pastors. They may not all be preaching firing brimstone, but it's all coming from that same place. Yeah. Yeah. They've got an insurrection going on within the party, within the movement, within the conservative movement. Well, and, and you know what? It's long overdue because... Uh, I, I, as I've said time and time again, I want to see a progressive, a healthy progressive conservative party in this country, which we have not had in a long time. Yeah. And I think the the few progressives that are left in that party are kind of like, all right, that we've had the, but enough of this shit. Mm-hmm. We we tolerated and, a lot, but now it's it's gone way too far, and we're about to push back, mm-hmm. and it's going to splinter that party. Yeah, and as we were talking about the party that seemed to be emerging as the new center, Solov centrist all of centrist option wow the, the center right party olive yeah I don't know the central <laughs> wow new centrist mm-hmm. option the center ice conservatives just had one of its main proponents tasha garrett post some silly article about our court being politicized and because yeah, we have to yeah. replace the supreme court justice let's so they're, they're playing the same game yeah i'm like they're, they're not they're, being moderate center ice they're not at all N- not at all the one that's emerging, you can't write something like that and then say that you're going to be. It was an opinion piece with no fact checking. Right? <laughs> like, come it's on. Just... One justice is from Newfoundland. Oh, okay. And the other one, one happens to be indigenous and the other one was, gee, maybe we should pick the right person for the job and not politicize so, the court. I'm like, come on, man. Let's, let's have a a court that's representative of Canadians from coast to coast. Right. They're kind of like deciding the things that regulate our lives. Uh, Maybe we would like people that look like us. And not just me. Not just me, right? Like, come on, man. Jeez. Uh, So, um, and then you wouldn't... Oh, what do I want to go to next? That's a little. Too well, I, I was gonna, I was gonna, I was gonna, I was gonna go somewhere with that one. <clears throat> okay. I had to adjust my my glasses. Um, not someone who looks like me, right? Mm. And then we we lean into France, where a mm. a young Muslim boy was shot and killed by the police on mm-hmm. Eid of all times, and the French are not having it. Mm-hmm. They are burning down the country right now. Mm-hmm. And it's not just the Muslim population that's doing it. I need mean, that's important. That statement is important. It's French people of all stripes who are like, all right, this is the straw that has broken the camel's back. 
They're having a George Floyd moment. They are. Uh, and the whole country is kind of behind it. And they are burning police cars, police stations. The, the riot police are completely overwhelmed. People are freaking out. And this may be the new French Revolution. Because they're fed up with austerity measures. They're fed up with this, this divisiveness that's been going on for the last number of years. And I think we've reached the break, breaking point, or at least the boiling point. And the French are not known to be um, passive when it comes to riots. Mm. <laughs> I mean, mm. let them eat cake, eh? Oh, yeah, I'll show you how we do that. <laughs> Try eating cake when I've put you in the guillotine, right? So, mm. right. Right. So, um, just to finish off with PP, mm -hmm. I just thought that, you know, so we have... <laughs> <laughs> um we'll give you the um the lucy van pelt oh i've not seen the uh, i'd like to see that yeah if you have it that'd be great i've uh, not I've, seen it yeah I, i'm hoping to find the side mm -hmm. by side uh, at, at well that's the point. perfect one right okay so i'll wait then i won't do it i won't do it this way uh for the side by side i'll i'll, I'll say that for later um okay. but uh we have this one this is the tweet i was talking about where uh the gentleman uh, said that we vote for Trudeau based on his looks. Right over here. So it's like a, at Jack G. Mitchell. Don't be ridiculous. Trudeau has been elected twice based half on how good looking he is. I put it up there for you, Mr. Grizzly. I'm like sitting there like, this reads like someone is triggered by the fact that PM is both better looking and a better person than they are. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you're going to say that about people who vote for the prime minister, you deserve yeah, you're gonna it's like, earn it. It's like, what are you? You know, are you sure what you? <laughs> anyway, I'm just saying. <laughs> it's like you're you're saying a lot about yourself when you talk about other people that way. You're saying the heck of a lot. Uh, and then, um, for PP, just a trip down memory lane for makeovers. Remember this one, Mr. Grizzly? <laughs> yes. So introducing oh Preston for the Evre. Remember when Preston got contacts and changed his wardrobe or when Harper donned the sweater vest and ate, or, or I mean held kittens? <laughs> Same damn play. Yeah. yeah. And then of course, remember? Preston Manning, we're, we're, we're going to reform things here in Canada. Uh. Same damn play. But of course, you know, I guess we can't really complain because, you know, when Trudeau went all true daddy during COVID and started wearing that beard, letting yeah, the COVID and hair there was the There was the hair swoop. Mm. <laughs> there was a million memes made about that, but let's not talk <sighs> about his looks, right? Mm. <laughs> Gotta say... I don't vote for him for his looks, but I tell you, when he's on the TV, I watch his pretty mouth when he talks. <laughs> you sure do have a pretty mouth. <laughs> I will admit that his looks make me stop and want to hear what he has to say, but then what he says determines whether or not he gets my vote. Well, this, this is the ultimate thing, right? <laughs> it's like, it, 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 and, and again... We don't vote for I won't him. Lie. I won't lie. He's a good looking man. I like looking at him. <laughs> I've seen him. I've met him. He's a, uh, he's a bigger fellow. He's a couple inches taller than me, but he's a, a little bit bigger frame than I thought he would be in person. Mm -hmm. Because I remember watching the boxing match. He didn't look that big. And yet in person, he kind of is. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and just charming. And he has the charisma. Um, he has his father's charisma. He doesn't have his father's intellect, but again, what was it Bob Ray said? He doesn't have his EQ, uh, IQ, but he certainly has the EQ that we need for these times. And I'm like, he has yeah, his that, mother's EQ. He has his mother's EQ. And the emotional quotient, uh, as many, many employers have discovered in the last 10, 15 years, is vastly more important than, than your level of intelligence because your emotional qu quotient will help you connect better with people. And I mean, after all, unless you're tightening bolts on an assembly line, which is done by a robot anyway, um, 
your EQ really does play into your job performance and how you interact with your coworkers and your clients and et cetera, et cetera. Having that really does make a difference. And, and, you know, believe me, disbelieve me, I don't care if you look at his record around the world and every encounter he has. For example, when he was in South Korea recently and he did the, the wide leg stance to lower his height to be the same height mm. as the older uh, Korean leader, which is a sign of respect in Korea. Yes. It's like people notice these things. Right. And they pay attention to them. Well, and, it was the and, same thing with the daycare photo, right? During the election campaign, when he had the baby on the hip and he had the hip like this in the arm and they said, oh, this is a guy that's not doing it for show. You can tell he does it with his own kids. And they were like yeah. pointing out all the body postures, right? It, it's not awkward. It's, it's natural. It's who he is, right? And again, like I said, initially when he ran and when he was in that boxing match with, with Patrick Bra, I wanted to see him get his ass kicked. I did. Because I was not a fan of his at the time. I've since come to uh, appreciate him. Uh, he, we have moments where I completely disagree with a lot of the things he does. But I think for the most part, he has done very good by Canada. He will be remembered as, as uh, one of Canada's best leaders through the most difficult time since World War I. So history will smile upon him. And, and as we've said time and time again, he's done more to actually lift uh, drinking water advisories on uh, First Nations communities around the country. Well, he's actually been the only one to ever do anything about it, number one. And number two, he put his money where his mouth was. He got it done. Is it is it 100% finished? No, there's still some. But there, we did have a whole, you know, global pandemic that kind of slowed down a lot of things over the last few years. And we had to concentrate on keeping our citizenry alive. So, you know, a few things here and there he had to deal with. Yeah, we've had uh, 142 long-term drinking water advisories lifted since November, November 2015, and there are 28 of them still in effect. So, I mean, that's a pretty damn good track record. He's yeah. still, you know, now you have to understand still, that still work to do, but yeah, now you have to understand that some of those 142 uh, are some that were lifted and then something happened mm -hmm. and they came back to effect and they needed to get fixed again. Go back in and uh, repair. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they go back in and repair, but there are 28 left. He's getting it done. Yeah. You know what? It, it would be something if those 28 could be completely done before the next election. Mm -hmm. Okay, just so he could have something to say, you know, because of the, even if it said two, right? Mm -hmm. They'll go, well, you didn't get it done. Yeah, 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 exactly. Right? And it would just be nice to say, you know, just for, the thing with this prime minister, right, is that he's managing to do all of this, despite the fact that, you know, soon into his mandate, we got to Trump and then everything was about NAFTA. Mm -hmm. And then we've solved that. And then we thought, okay, finally we can breathe. And then boom, you know, there was flight PS, the, 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 the plane in the, around that got shut mm -hmm. down, shot down. And I thought, okay, that was on the way. And then we can finally breathe. And then boom, COVID. And now we got through that and now we can finally breathe. And now it's like, <sighs> we've got like people losing their mind because of trans stuff, trans stuff and foreign interference. And, housing and, and the foreign yeah. and the foreign interference file and you know and it's just it's a new rage farm every day but also a major crisis mm -hmm. the Meng Wanzhou thing the hostage diplomacy that was two years mm -hmm. two years of a story that you know it's just like opposition see thank you for this bat China yeah <laughs> right um because every time they'd like put a trade sanction, every time they'd like turn up the heat, you know, like this and the conservatives, oh my God, look at this. I mean, they're still saying right now, right? Trudeau, like guess Canada's reputation is shit in the world. And it's like uh, the prime minister was just the guest of honor at a meeting of the five Northern, the five Nordic nations. Mm -hmm. It was just the guest of honor. Yeah. There are newspaper articles galore in the last week about how it is he's, Diversified our economy, and, yeah. Diversified our economy and put made us a winner. Um, right now in the United States, you have Joe Biden going all over the place talking about Bidenomics, mm -hmm. right? Which is the whole thing. His thing is like less focusing on the trickle down mm -hmm. 
which and never more focusing on doing things for the for the middle the, the middle class. Well, um, Biden became he's still in his first term. Yeah, Bidenomics is Trudenomics. Yeah, it is. Well, yesterday you had he's the one that came in during the time in that first election that went against the against the orthodoxy because because of Martin and Kretzian, it was like you know we we balance the budget and we pay down debt and you don't take on debt and, and it's like uh no these are like near zero percent interest rates if we're going to do some big capital stuff this That's is the, the time to buy the money yeah. yeah let's go you know lfg let's do this well uh, was and then all of a sudden now we've got the seeds of various different types of industries that are underway and you know and all that kind of stuff and yes we've taken on some debt to do that but we've taken on debt we didn't take on debt so that we can go take a vacation. We take on debt so that we can buy an investment. Right? There's good debt and there's bad debt. When you take on debt to have a mortgage, because you're buying equity, you're going to have an asset. That's good debt. Because if you're already in debt and you take on more debt just to go have a vacation, like this, you know, unless you really, really, really need that vacation to recharge in order to come back and make more money. Sometimes <laughs> um, that is the case. And sometimes that is the case. You, that's probably not good debt, right? So the type of debt matters, uh, and there's like all these articles <laughs> coming around. Um, he's doing very, very well. Mm -hmm. I mean, Zelensky always has time for his calls. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's kind of the, the major global issue going on. Putin finds it so effective that he banned Freeland and free, you know, it's like, we're nowhere, really? Really? I mean, China's not very happy with us, but China sure in hell knows who we are. Well, they, they know we won't be pushed <laughs> around. We're not going to take it, right? We're not the, if you're like, yeah, it's like, oh, well, yeah, let's go to the, Canada's the smallest of the G7. Let's punch a hole through that. And that's the way we'll get that. Not happening. Don't. Not happening. You ever not seen happening. a hockey fight? <laughs> we know how to defend ourselves. Yes, we're quiet and polite and kind and say sorry a lot. Until you piss us off. You remember G the Geneva Convention was created because of what we did in World War One. We showed no mercy to the enemy. Zero. Hmm. Don't think we can't go there again if we have to. We are capable of it. We just don't like to do it. I have something here I want to read for you, sir, because you had made mention right. of it a few minutes ago. Shoving it down our throats. This hmm. is from Atlantis USA 70 on Twitter. Shoving it down our throats. The most overused statement said or written by an oppressor. When was the last time an LGBT person showed up at your door to ask if you know the rainbow? When have you found tracts and pamphlets scattered all over your car, front door, or in public spaces begging you to join the LGBT community for a weekly Praise the Rainbow meeting? When have you received a phone call or text message from an LGBT person that says, we just want to make sure you know the rainbow is the only way to avoid a life of damnation? When has an LGBT person ever told you, if you aren't LGBT, we will cast you into a fiery hell? I, damn, dude, you, you knocked that one out of the park. Mm hmm Like. You need to send me that. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll do that right now, sir. Yeah. And um, did you have more on that? No, that that was his statement, and I thought he just he completely nailed it because he, he's he right, and that's the thing. I hate it when they shove it down our throat. It was like the thing I showed you today. Is like the way they're waving the flags in our faces. It's like their it's their whole identity, yep. and it's like they they fail to see the irony in that. Yep, indeed. Like they're sat, sitting there with a MAGA flag and a Trump twenty twenty four flag and a MAGA hat and Trump T shirts, and I'm like. It's a cult, man. <laughs> it's it really a cult. is. Um, and then, uh, Mr. Grizzly, as we were talking about, when I was talking about Canada, you know, its place on the world stage, uh, this one came out uh, just the other day. So more news that'll make conservatives spit teeth. Mm -hmm. 
in the Telegraph, the UK. Yeah. The world's wokest country is leaving Britain's economy in the dust. And uh, the Telegraph is kind of known as um, a conservative rag. It's not as bad as the Daily Mail, but it's not exactly what you'd call a woke liberal ideological newspaper or publication for that matter. Uh, so, you know, you've got Bloomberg touting our positive uh, attributes from the prime minister and how the economy has been diversified and how we're leaving all other G7 partners behind because we're just leading the pack. You get the Telegraph, you get the, the Washington Post, the Bloomberg article, and these are all, the Bloomberg article especially is written by an individual who has been doing this longer than I've been alive. Mm -hmm. They don't, they don't drop stories like that without doing their research. These are people who are experts in their field. So when Bloomberg writes it, it's like, you better, you best believe he knows what he's talking about. This is not well, just yeah. somebody trying to cite stats. This is somebody who knows what they're talking about. We're doing good. We have more good to do. We have more work to do. We have to lift more people out of poverty. There is more work to do. Now, that being said, the government only has so much control over that. Unless we nationalize everything and start paying everybody a living wage. You know, they, they can't control private industry. And private industry is, mm. you know, profit motivated and shareholder profit shares motivated. So uh, oftentimes they will refuse any sort of uh, pay rise to the employees because it will cut into their margin. It's like the guy from Bell who just fired 1,300 people and uh, shutting down state, literally shut radio stations down, just turn the switch off. And now they're trying mm. to get out of local news. Well, I find that interesting that none of the shareholders or the board or the CEO did anything to help the 1,300 people they just axed. They could have taken pay cuts. They could have put austerity measures on themselves, kept those mm -hmm. jobs. Mm -hmm. But no, they won't do that because they're greedy bastards. That's okay though, don't worry. They'll get theirs in the end. They'll get theirs in the end. And I'm not saying that we're going to, we're going to do anything. Karma comes for those who wait. And Karma, she can be a mean, nasty lady some days. Hmm. Speaking of ladies who are anything but mean or nasty, Sue Johansson. Yeah, passed away yesterday at 93. Yeah. 93. Sex with Sue. At a long, yep, yeah, at a long term care uh, home uh, in Toronto. Um, she was known for the Sunday night sex show and talks with talk with sex, sorry, talk sex with Sue Johansson. Um, she was great. And uh, there's recently a um, documentary I think made on uh, her life uh, that's been uh, playing on TV, but I think it, we talked about it on, on the show that it was, uh, that mm -hmm. it was coming out. Um, but yeah, um, she, uh, she was a real benefit because um, she gave Frank talk. She knew that she was grandmother, so she was safe. Yes. Right. She could talk about these things and she wouldn't be threatening. And, you know, um, well, she started her career as a nurse, receiving her training in Winnipeg during the 1970s. This is according to a CBC article. And she opened a birth mm -hmm. control clinic at the Toronto High School and ran it for almost two decades. Um. Her show premiered as a live call-in program on Toronto radio in 1984. Now, 1984, that's around the area, the time where AIDS and HIV was really starting to ramp up because it was detected in 1981 mm -hmm. in San Francisco. So we're about three years into it. And you know, um, you know who patients So a show like that was... Zero was, right? Uh, allegedly, yes. A flight attendant from Quebec apparently. Um, uh, and then she had a television version of the show that aired on the W network from 1996 to 2005. And then a U.S. spinoff talk with talk sex with Sue Johansson that was started in 2002 and concluded in 2008. Um, 
so from basically 1984 to 2008, almost nonstop, that's 16, 24 years. Yeah. He was coming into people's homes and just demystifying. Well, all of it, uh, and all, and when I say all of it, all of it. Oh yeah, and but she she would talk about and, and she spoke. Sue Johansson is the person. Yep, Sue Johansson was the person who, when some people were like saying, "Oh, the condos are too small," would take the condom and like put them over her her, her, her full her whole arm. <laughs> it goes like this: If you can feel this, come and see me, young man. We need to talk. <laughs> right, or something of that. I guess, but she would just do it. Really, really. <laughs> so uh she would you know just no nonsense just deliver the straight goods uh nothing was off limits well and i used to watch the show occasionally because there were things you could learn about it uh especially when it came to um communities that i'm not a part of i'm like well i'm curious i don't need to explore it personally firsthand but hey i can get the info here right so there was things I learned from that show. And it, remember Dr. Ruth Westheimer, which was the American version yeah. of, of Sue. Um, and she was, she was good too, but uh, Sue just had a, a no bullshit way of, of, of delivering things. And uh, yeah, it may she rest in peace. I think she did a lot of good for uh, a lot of people in her lifetime by educating them and, and taking away the stigma around it. Taking away, mm -hmm. you know, making making it so that people could actually have a frank, open discussion about something that is as human as, as human as it could possibly be. Without that act, we don't exist, right? <laughs> Simple as that, right? I mean, the reason we exist is because of sex. So why are we so think it's such a taboo subject to talk about? And Gen Z doesn't. They don't. They don't. It doesn't bother them. Of course, they've been watching pornography since they were 10. So that might be, might be why. Yeah. So, you know, we'll see, we'll see in 10 years what the world is like. And it maybe, you know, maybe it wasn't as bad as we all thought it would be. I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know much about anything. I'm kind of a dumb guy. I do have a, I, I, there's a, I'm going to put I'm a not, link I'm to. I'm not done yet. I'm not done oh, I'm just putting a link to an article in the chat. That's all. Okay. All right. Um, so. The thing with Sue Johansson was that she trained as a nurse. She was taught by nuns who didn't speak about sex. Oh, and right. the repression, that repression, that's what informed her approach. Uh, so that's what said, you know, I need just to be open and honest and non-judgmental about this stuff. Nadine Thornhill, a Toronto sex educator, previously told CBC News, quote, Sue approached everything as though it was just normal. Like she said, all of the words, she said, all of the taboo sex words, she talks about penises and clitorises and orgasms, but she was just that very matter of fact about it. And I don't think that I mm -hmm. ever had heard anyone talk about sex in that way. And that was the thing. And she would talk about homosexuality. And she, so in that, it, by including us in the conversation, like we were, it was just natural that we would talk about it as well. Mm -hmm. so particular again, 1984 tonight, she, she did a lot for our community simply by proactively talking about us. And you need to know about this too. I'm going to talk about this. And, we'll, mm -hmm. you know, and if you're gay, you need to know about this. Uh, as it was normal that it would be included, that we have to talk about everyone. Is that it did a lot. So, uh, Sue, uh, thank you. Uh, in 2000, she was order, awarded the Order of Canada, very deservedly so, no for being a, quote, strong, successful advocate for sex education. On the Governor General's website, she's praised for decades of work, quote, listening without judgment and candid in her responses. She helps Canadians to improve their understanding of sexuality and their ability to make wise health choices, which is really, really, really important. Mm -hmm. All right. So, uh, thank you, Sue. Yeah, you got Jen. She was a legend in Kit, uh, uh, Kit Toronto D. Sue came to our school when I was 15. I learned women, body parts, and sex ed from Sue. And, you know, there's other stuff too, like that, you know, they got some 
things that people wrote in. And not going to lie, I learned how to properly put on a condom on watching Sue demonstrate it on her show. I loved Sue growing up. I used to listen to her every night before I went to sleep. She taught me to have a healthy attitude around masturbation, gave me the sex education schools wouldn't. Um, Canada has lost an absolute icon. Sue Johansson did more for sex education in this country than anyone. When the government failed to educate the public on the risks of HIV, Sue filled the gap and she did it with empathy. These are all just things that people have tweeted um, about her. Canada lost a national treasure today, but Sue's legacy will continue to make positive change for decades to come. It's just... Her daughter, Jane... Uh, said she believes it was her mother's sense of humor that clicked with so many people and recognizing that the topic of sex would make lots of people uncomfortable or shut down. Quote, she knew that if she used humor antics, you know, jumping around the stage, stretching condoms, being light about it, she knew that she could break the ice and then make people comfortable. Mm -hmm. As soon as she made people comfortable, then she could get into the real nitty gritty of the topic. Very true. So, once again, thank you, Sue. Uh, you've earned your rest. You've definitely earned your rest. <laughs> You've helped. And I'm sure you're aware because you were universally loved, but um, you've helped so many people. Mm -hmm. Especially those who had questions who knew they couldn't go to a parent to ask them. Mm. Right? Mm. And it's better to mm. get it from a, a nurse practitioner with medical advice than it is to go and get it from the street. Oh, boy. Right? Yes. Get the straight goods, get the truth, get the facts, get the information you need to make an informed decision, which is what it boils down to. And you can go out and make yep. an informed decision. But if you're getting your, your, your facts from the streets or from an older brother or, or sister or a friend or a cousin or somebody, who, and they got their telephone tag, right? They got their right. information from somebody who passed it to them, and it's always way out of whack. You know, I've talked about before how when I was 15 years old, my aunt came to me and said, Paul, your mother's going through change of life, so just be gentle with her. I'm like, uh-huh. It was 1984, 83? Yeah. I, what the hell does that mean? <laughs> I had no idea what it meant, and they wouldn't discuss yeah. it or tell me what it was. It was change of life. I was a 15-year-old boy. I had no way of understanding what that meant. I had no clue. Why didn't they just say menopause? I could have looked that word up. I could have gone to the, the, the library and I had heard the word menopause. I didn't know what it meant. But I could have mm -hmm. gone to the library, pulled out the Encyclopedia Britannica and looked it up. But I didn't get that. I got change of life, dear. Be gentle with her. What the hell does that mean? All of a sudden, my mom starts to go a little bit wacky and I'm like, what did I do? I'd come home and she'd just scream at me for no reason. I'm like, what? I just got home. And then she'd burst out crying. And then, then make dinner for everybody. It was like, what? And I mean, I, I understand. Like, it's, a, it, it's a, a very traumatic process to the brain and body that a woman goes through when she is going through menopause. And, and a lot mm -hmm. of people don't even want to talk about it. And I'm like, but why not? It's a natural progression. It's like puberty. You're going to go through it. If you live long enough, you're going to experience it. So let's talk about it. Let's be open and frank about it. I don't know why people are so freaked out about that. But then again, was it uh, somebody put it, it was PNC Bio put a, a comment in here, and I'm going to put it on the screen right now. She didn't even ostracize the gays. In 2023, they'd call that hero a groomer. Rest in peace to a saint. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, you're going, to, you're going to call me a groomer because I'm going to talk about menopause? Something we should be talking about. It's a natural progression mm -hmm. for any woman if you live long enough, period. Period. Yeah. Period. Because you don't get them anymore. And, uh, and you're really good setting me up with segues. Speaking of women. My favorite subject. Mm, there is a, a lot of, well, let's just say equity news lately. The first little bit is that uh, the government of Canada has appointed a new federal pay equity commissioner. So, because apparently uh, we didn't have one for a while, uh, or at least an interim one. So um, 
the Minister of Labor, Seamus Reagan, uh, Seamus O'Regan Jr., announced the appointment of Lori Strasniski as Canada's new federal pay equity commissioner. She stepped in as the interim commissioner in November 2022, so I guess she's been confirmed in the position, providing oversight in the government's work to strengthen pay equity in Canada. Um, working within the commission, Lori will continue to lead a dedicated unit responsible for assisting stakeholders and bargaining agents on pay equity issues, investigating complaints related to the contravention of the Pay Equity Act, and educating employers on their obligations under the Act. As she has in her interim role, Lori will play an important role in helping to reduce the gender wage gap in federally regulated workplaces. She was appointed through an open and transparent process. She will be appointed to the Canadian Human Rights Commission, effective November 1st, 2023, for a term of five years. So that happened. That's the overall context. And now, the National Bank Open, Canada's premier tennis tournament, has announced that by 2027, men and women will be getting the same prize money. Oh, that's good. They've been doing that at the U.S. Open uh, for tennis for a number of years now, eh? Yep, exactly. Um, so we have this photo here. It's not recent. It's probably from when Canada, when Team Canada was competing at uh, the last um, Billie Jean Cup. But we have a photo with Billie Jean King here, who was a pioneer. Mm -hmm on fighting for uh, pay equity uh, within uh, tennis. Uh, so we have uh, our our stellar team. We have Gabriela Jabrowski here, who's a doubles ace, Leila yeah. Fernandes, Billie Billy Jean King, uh, Bianca Andrescu, Carol Zhao, and Rebecca Mar Marino. Rebecca's tall. And, uh, Carol, Mar yeah. Well, Mar Rebecca Marino, the first time Venus Williams played against mm -hmm. her all those years ago, Venus Williams said, oh, so that's what it feels like playing against myself. <laughs> That. Yeah. Okay. Right, because when Venus Williams showed up at uh, at uh, Wimbledon, like you know, when when they're in her prime, she was serving two hundred kilometers an hour, and she's six one. Right, she's she's tall and powerful. Um, speaking of this group, um, so yes, the, well, they're going to have uh, yeah, exact equal job, equal pay. So uh, the Canadian tournament revealed that it will also receive an upgrade status on both the WTA and ATP tour to expand from a seven-day main draw event to a 12-day event starting in 2025, with the exception of Olympic years, because they have to fit in an extra tournament. It usually happens right in the summer. National Bank opens in August. So usually the schedule gets uh, compressed because there's an Olympic mm -hmm. uh, tennis tournament. Um, this is a really exciting day for professional tennis in Canada, said Gavin Ziv, Chief Tournament Officer at Tennis Canada. Creating a clear path towards equal prize money at our tournament has been years in the making, and it required a lot of work. Fortunately, with the help of the WTA and the National Bank, that goal will become a reality in 2027, and we couldn't be more delighted. Um, so... I'm trying to look. There was a schedule. There it is. In the four years preceding 2027, the prize money will increase to reduce the current difference in pay between women and men players. Therefore, the National Bank Open's WTA prize money is projected to rise from roughly 32% of the ATP prize money. That's what it is now. In a two-week format to nearly 60% by 2025 when both events expand to 12-day main draws, 78% in 2026, and 100% by 2027. The total WTA prize money will be close to $10 million U.S. beginning in 2027, a 350% increase over just four years. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's massive. And the draws will be uh, also uh, expanded when they get to the 12-day draws. So right now... Um, there's a big qualification tournament, mm -hmm. but 56 players get into the main draw. It will be a 96-player main draw for women, women and men when they go to the 12-day format. Big. So making it very close to a Grand Slam. Oh, yeah. Like, the only difference is that in a Grand Slam, of course, the men and the women participate in the same city. Mm -hmm. And in Canada, uh, they don't. Uh, and before... A few years ago, the men used to participate one week and the women participated another week. Now they're both the same week in two different locations, which kind of makes it hard. Whereas opposed to, I think, Indian Wells, where they actually have the men and the women playing at mm -hmm. the same venue at the same time. Um, so, uh, yeah, this is, uh, and this is, uh, the money is, uh, the expansion of the 12-day format is made possible thanks to major funding of nearly $20 million for 
via the government of Canada's major festivals and event sports initiative. So they're putting some money into it. Uh, in Toronto, 9.3 came from a federal economic development agency for Southern Ontario, while in Montreal, 10 million was received from the Canada Economic Development for Quebec regions. The investment announced on the eve of the 2022 National Bank Open will prove crucial in supporting various tournament enhancements over the coming years, such as infrastructure upgrades to accommodate more fans and improvement to product offerings as well. Uh, and uh, the bank is also, uh, Bank of uh, National Bank of Canada as a sponsor is actually putting more money into it itself as well mm. uh, to increase the prize money. So, and just as a little aside, uh, Carol Zhao, who we showed in that previous mm -hmm. picture, at the tender age of 28, I remember we talked about Catherine Sebov, mm -hmm. At the early at the beginning of the year when she qualified for the the australian open i think at 24 mm -hmm. 25 when we're saying like bluber at the age of 28 carol zhao has qualified for her first grand slam ever and it is wimbledon thank you very much that's the granddaddy of them all right yeah that's the big one so uh this is this young lady uh she is not tall i'm asking i'm, I'm asking for to increase in size and it's shrinking that's weird yeah. uh <laughs> not very tall extremely powerful and feisty not, uh, and that, that statement I, you just made a second ago not that any man has ever said that ever before no but if you watch no, no, her play no, you what i said well, think about it <laughs> no. come on dude that was a oh, joke it was right across the plate i had to knock it out of the I, park i missed it i missed it totally um <laughs> i want it to get bigger but it's only shrinking <laughs> oh man jeez 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 uh so she's gonna she won that three rounds joke, by the way for those of you who didn't yes yes, I, I, yes she she won three golf clap, golf clap, golf clap. <laughs> she won three rounds uh and so she gets to enter the tournament uh she will join bianca andrescu leila annie fernandez in uh the women's singles uh i don't know if rebecca marino is going to be playing in the singles she has been trying to play some uh, some grass things but i know she's recovering from mm -hmm. an injury as well uh but i mean she would qualify for the main draw uh just based on a ranking alone so i i don't know if she's skipping it or not and uh felix ogielia and dennis shapovalov and mila sranich are going to play on the men's side i guess they gave uh Ranich, uh a special entry mm -hmm. because he was a finalist right. once. Um, yeah, he was the first Canadian so man to ever play in the final. Yes, to play in a Grand Slam. But not final. the first Canadian. No. That was Eugenie Bouchard. Yes. Played in the Wimbledon Who, uh, final. Uh, yeah, whose recovery is going well too. She played in a... Uh, uh, she was a uh, in the qualification tournament, uh, but she got in it on uh, with no special thing on her own ranking. So she's uh, she's about to enter the top two hundred. Uh, she got a really bad draw though. She uh, uh, drew Greet Minen from uh, Belgium, who is one of those players that is not extremely high ranked. Uh, but if she's on a roll, she's on a roll, and you absolutely have to beat her because she will not make mistakes. Okay. Um, so it was a great match. I actually watched it. They both played their hearts out, but. Yeah. Well, she was on the losing side of it, but she's 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 finding her form. She she will be back. I want to I want to pivot back to politics for a minute here, if I could. Oh, I, I had one. Go more ahead, go ahead. On the pay equity thing, and the last pay equity thing, and this I think might qualify as a BFD. Mm -hmm. Put this up, Mister Grizzly. The PHF, which is uh, the Women's Hockey League. Mm -hmm is to cease operations paving way for one women's professional hockey league. Well, we have the morning four. So the Premier Hockey Federation has been purchased by the Mark Walter Group and Billy Jean King Enterprises. Oh, interesting. Hello, hello, hello. Multiple sources briefed on the situation told the Atlantic on the Athletic, sorry, on Thursday night. The league will cease all operations, the PHF's player contracts will be terminated, players will receive severance and a period of continued health benefits. The news comes after a long-running divide between the league and the Professional Women's Hockey's Player Association and fundamentally alters the landscape of professional women's hockey. The path is now clear for one North American league that can showcase the best players in the world. Players from the PHF and the PWHPA were told the news in separate meetings on Thursday evening. 
The PHF, previously known as the National Women's Hockey League, was founded in 2015 and has been the only option for professional women's hockey in North America after the Canadian Women's Hockey League shut down in March 2019. The PWHPA, that's the Players Association, was founded in May 2019 with the vision of building a sustainable league. In May 2022, The Athletic was first to report that the... Oh, darn. I've lost the link. The rest of it is behind the paywall. Of course. Why would you do that? So they can, they can make you why pay would for you... it. That's why. That's just how it goes. Man. That's just how it goes. <clears throat> Can't subscribe to everything. We'd be broke. Wait a minute. I am broke. <laughs> uh, <sighs> it happens, man. There's only so much you can do, right? Uh, All right. Hold on. Let me see here. If we could curate more feeds, that would be great. But, I mean, how many can we afford is the thing. Yep. Yep. Hold on. Let me see. Hopefully CBC has something. Well, there we go. Sportico, sports that there we go. Got the full story now. Yeah, I got from a uh, Sportsnet here. Uh, the ratification of the bill is expected to take place next week. The vote. Mm. Um, Jana, Jana Helford, who's the chief of the Players Association and the commissioner of the Hockey Federation, Reagan Carey, will feature in leadership roles, a source told the Associated Press. Along Among the many issues that need to be sorted out include the number of teams, where they will play, what will happen to the existing contracts, some of which are worth more than $150,000 and run over two seasons. Um, the PHF doubled each team's salary cap to $1.5 million entering this season, and it had teams in Boston, Toronto, and Montreal, along with East Rutherford, New Jersey, Hartford, Connecticut, and Buffalo, New York, and Richfield, Minnesota. So whether or not those teams get to survive or how they franchise out, those are big issues. Um, so yeah. Cool. We have pay equity in tennis. We might have finally a professional women's hockey league. And I believe that Bettman back in the day said that if ever one was established, the NHL would start offering help like mm -hmm. the NBA offered help to the WNBA. Mm -hmm. uh, hope he follows through on that. Well, time will tell. Yeah. But uh, this one's for the girls. The ladies. The song is called This One's for the I know, Girls. I know, I know, I know. I know. Yes. <laughs> but yeah. And of course, when we say girls, we say G R R R L S. Mm -hmm. Right, girls. girls. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. Canadian girls kick ass. Yes, they do. Um, especially our athletes. Holy crow. Oh, yeah. They deserve this. Mm -hmm. They deserve this. Well, and, and you think of the, the women that came before them that put in uh, so much of their lives into this and, and were never, ever rewarded for it appropriately. Or, uh, I'm sure there's a certain amount of uh, rejoicing. going. There's probably a little resentment from one or two people, but I'd say for the most part, and I'm, I'm going way out on a limb here, I'd, I'd say for the most part, most uh, women would be like applauding it, saying this is what we wanted from the get-go, right? Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. And maybe all of this might uh, light a fire under soccer, Canada soccer's butt. I think. I mean, like, come on. Who has honored this nation on the global football stage more than the Canadian women's national team. Well, that would be no one. That would be no one. They right. Two bronze medals and a gold in the Olympics? Hello? Hello? Right. And, you know, and then the audacity, you know, this past World Cup where when, when uh, what's his name, scored a, the first Canadian goal in, in uh, World Cup uh, men's soccer history. This is yeah. the biggest moment Maybe. for the history of Canadian soccer. You have a panelist right next to you, sir, who won a gold medal in the Olympics a year ago. <laughs> Come on, man. Yeah. And I don't think it was malicious on his part. I, I just think it was uh, not thoughtful. He, he was not being yeah. thoughtful at that time. He was, it was uh, sh genuinely showing an insensitivity. I mean, back when they, Andy Murray won a tournament and they're like, Nobody has ever won as many. And he goes, no, that's not true. Serena Williams has won more. And they all sort of went, oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Andy Murray's a good guy. Yep. 
He's massive. Yeah. yeah. He's, a, he's a big lad. Like, no, but he's really massive. You know, when you mentioned Trudeau, his mm-hmm. frame, he goes, Andy Murray's 6'3. Yeah. He's, he's a big fella. Okay, to start with. But if you ever watch him, if you look at his, uh, his calves, mm-hmm. how thick, he is thick like that all. Yeah. He's over. just solid. He's it's, a big, sol- solid he's Scotsman. A wall. Yeah. Holy crap. It's, it, it's really impressive when you see him in person. Because, you know, you see him on TV, you, you can tell he's big. Yeah, but you can't tell how big. Right, like this. But, he's, but you've got, like, the tennis court is big. You see, like, it's like, ooh, hello. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like NHL players. You can't tell how big they are because they're all the same size for the most part on the ice. But when you sit close to the glass at an NHL game, you see how big how strong, how fast these guys are, how hard they hit. And if you've seen a hockey fight close up, you would know, you don't want to be on the receiving end of that. <laughs> you mm. don't. Mm-hmm. It, it would hurt tremendously. These guys are big, tough brutes. Yep. Oh, Mr. Grizzly. I found it. <laughs> ah, yes. And you know what? The, the, side by side. the resemblance is uncanny. I'll put this up in a sec, but I'm looking at it in, in the green room. It's like the resemblance is uncanny. It's like, it, it, it's looking, it's a mirror. It's looking into a mirror. Tell me I'm wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I like it, Lady Ingrid. Hear me out. I... <laughs> <laughs> For those of you listening, it is a picture of Pierre Polyev beside Lucy makeover. Van Pelt. The makeover Polyev beside Lucy Van Pelt from the, the Peanuts game. And I told you it's the eyes, right? Yeah. The eyes and the and the, the Charlie Brown mouth. Yeah. That the straight scowl. line. Yeah. <laughs> and then there was there was also this one. Calvin. <laughs> from Calvin and Hobbes. I think the Lucy Lucy's ones were better, bang on yeah. though. So it, it's, <laughs> now we're now that we're talking about the Conservative Party of Canada, I found something here a minute ago that came across my feed, and I thought that's interesting. Conservative Party of Canada, we're tough on crime, unless it's a hate crime committed by one of the rage monkeys we are winding up and then unleashing on society. Then we won't say a mm-hmm. damn thing for fear of offending our hateful base. Mm-hmm. Now this is a tweet from uh, Cliff Four One Eight One Seven Five Seven Five Three. Rusty Idols. Uh, it's a good follow. I just started to follow him now. You know, when you see an interesting tweet from somebody, I'll go and check out, you know, before I follow somebody, yep. I check out their bio and I stream through to see what they've tweeted, retweeted, and, and you know, to see. Because yep. if you're going to be yep. a hateful person, I'm not, I'm not, no. No, this guy, uh, interesting fella. Interesting fella. And uh, let's see here. I'll, I'll just read a little bit about him. He says, hang on, where is it? Canadian former journalist, former union activist, and lobbyist. He, him. Okay. That's a good follow, I think. And he only joined in January mm-hmm. of 2021, so he's not been on the on the Twitter for that long. Uh, I mean, some of his t- tweets here, I think, um, with this one, as the Holocaust leaves living memory, the worldwide conservative movement slinks back to, slinks back to ethno-nationalism and authoritarianism like a dog to its vomit. Mm-hmm. Uh, interesting fella. Interesting fella. A, a, a fairly decent follow, I, I, I would say. You know, choose if you want. You can you can find him on my Twitter. Anybody who follows me can find him on there. Seems like a seems like a good lad. Well, now that because you, you're mentioning that, um, Rachel Gilmore mm-hmm. that uh, tweeted this when. Uh, Mr. Uh, when Prime Minister Trudeau put out a statement, uh, let's see if I can make it a little bigger here. Um, Yesterday's stabbings at a gender studies class at the University of Waterloo are horrifying and unacceptable. This type of violence must always be condemned. Our thoughts are with the professor and two students who were injured. Rachel Gilmore asked, did I miss a similar statement on this from Polyev? I don't see anything on his timeline. Um, Nothing. It's worth noting though, that advocates would like to see a lot more than just words here. And there uh, she tweets uh, Faye Johnstone, um, who mm-hmm. uh, was one of the people uh, featured on those Hershey bars or the Hershey? Yes. Hershey yes. bars? Um, Canadian. Uh, and uh, Faye also posted something yesterday that, you know, that they were kind of shook and 
I'll find the tweet because I said you were not alone uh, and she liked it. So uh, maybe I will ask her if she would like to come on the show at some point. Yeah, see if you can get her. She, 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 she does respond to people. So, um, But she said, we need an urgent response to rising anti-2S LGBTQIA plus hate. Not more statements. When will the federal government hashtag act for queer safety? Um, so advocates want to see much more words. And then um, Rachel uh, said, would love to be proven wrong and to have just missed something. Please share if you find anything, but I haven't been able to. And then... Um, some Twitter twit mm -hmm. uh, did th this. Hold on, let me just put. Uh, you're going to have to look to the bottom of the screen because I don't want to blow uh, what comes next. Uh, okay. But here you go. So down here at the bottom. Oh, darn. Okay, hold on. I'll just move that here so people can see it. Eco fashion here. You seem to be saying Pierre is somehow responsible for it. No. Just ask if you said anything about it. Mm -hmm. Did Pierre release a statement about the Vancouver Starbucks stabbing? Actually, yeah. <laughs> 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 he spoke about that Starbucks stabbing in the House Commons. <laughs> Receipts. A, uh, a simple little check. Simple little check. Right. Uh, I don't understand. I don't understand at all um, why it is. I mean, I get it. Mm -hmm. Right? He doesn't want to upset the base. But. Sorry. How many people are you going to lose to not upset the base? Is, is, is the base really that? No. How it, badly do you need them? I, I think what they're. How badly can you not win without them? And if you really can't win without them that badly, maybe you shouldn't be running on what you're running. Well, they've lost sight of the fact that you should always, always, always comment on an event when something like that happens and make it be known that we're not going to put up with this, including in our own party. If you support this, I don't want your support. That, and that's what Trudeau said yes. when it came to the abortion issue. Yeah. He took a stand. Take a stand. Because whatever you think in your personal life, if you're a member of this party and you're speaking publicly, you're advocating for choice. You, you can't please. Or else you can't be a member of this club. You can't please everyone, right? So it's ridiculous to, to, to try and bend over and not offend the, you know, the group of people that support that action. Well, you know what? Fuck them. I'm not going to support those people. Anybody who supports what that guy did, fuck you. You don't get my support. You get my disdain. And any politician who doesn't call that out is not worth the time of day. Mm -hmm. Because they're not calling that out. That's a tacit support thereof. And guess what? They'd throw you under that bus too. It's simply how yeah. it works, right? Right. I. <laughs> it's a predictable play. That's an interesting comment from Linda. I think he really doesn't want to comment because while he doesn't outright support it, he has sympathy for it. There's MGTOW hashtags, it right? It. Yeah. He's... He's had his thumbs in those pies. Mm -hmm. I mean, as I said yesterday, this thing, based on all the political fentanyl that's been pumped into our system, was only a question of when it was going to happen. Not if. Now it's happened. The question is, will they pull back? And now one side is not even acknowledging that it happened. Mm -hmm. Not denying, but not, not acknowledging. acknowledging. Maybe if we don't talk about it, the news cycle will just take this away. And Well, we're not going to let them get away with that. We're still mad about the Nazi brunch that he's never publicly come out and said anything The fact that about. she came back a second time. Yeah. 
She came back a second time. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Mr. Grizzly, if you have something, can you take it for a while? I want to cue something. Yeah, um, I have. I have for, for Ottawa residents um, and for people around the country who I'm sure are familiar with our LRT woes, our light rapid transit, light rail transit. Uh, our trains tend to to derail, and and then the wheels go square when they're supposed to be round. And if there's a bird that lands on a wire, it shuts. Like, I mean, it's really pathetic how bad it is. Well, we had to shut down today because of freezing rain. We had a, a buildup of ice. Oh, really? In Ottawa? Ottawa had a buildup of ice in the winter. You mean a, the second coldest national capital on earth had a buildup of ice? You didn't account for this in your design? Well, they also didn't build the stations large enough. And if you've been on the uh, downtown uh, section, which is underground, it's tunneled, the stations there, the platforms are very small. They're very small. They're lovely, but they're very small. Mm-hmm. So tomorrow, being Canada Day, is a release from uh, OC Transpo. Access to Pemizzi Station will be restricted on Canada Day, Saturday, July 1st, at the request of Heritage Canada and Ottawa Police to support crowd safety on event day. Mm-hmm. Entry to Pemissy Station from Albert Street will be reserved for customers with accessibility needs. Okay, that's fine. All other entrances will be closed. Wait, what? That's where they want to build the new rink. Right next to the Pemissy Station. So what you're saying is the station isn't big enough to handle massive crowds because we didn't build it. Pro- it th- <sighs> this makes no damn sense, but I... But it's the case. They're not big enough. So here we have uh, a light rapid transit, light rail transit, designed to move thousands of people per hour. And the station's not big enough to handle the crowds that are going to appear on Canada Day. What's going to happen when you have 22,000 people exiting the, the hockey arena? I just... <laughs> really? They, they didn't plan for Canada Day? That happens every year? Really? Well, and they're like, well, you know, uh, because we moved Canada Day to uh, Le Breton Flats, well, well, Parliament Hill is under construction. Okay, but the Parliament Station is even smaller than the Pemizzi Station, and it right. is just down the, the hill from Parliament Hill. I was there yesterday. Uh, look, I, I, I love the train. I'm, I'm, I'm happy that it's expanding. I'm happy that they're really doing their best to provide better access. We do need a train to go. We, do need, we need a tunnel down Bank Street and we need a tunnel or, or uh, well, I, I, literally we need a tunnel down Montreal Road hmm. because Vanier, which is a huge population base yep. and it's also the lowest income base in the city. Actually, yep. that's not true. That's not true. Somerset Ward, the ward I live in, which is yes. Centertown, is the poorest ward in the, in, in, in the national capital by far. Hmm. Uh, but Vanier uh, does not have adequate uh, service. We need a tunnel that way too. And there's people who are pushing for it. They're pushing for a Bank Street tunnel so we could have a stop at Lansdowne. So if you yep. want to go to a concert or a hockey game or a yep. football game at Lansdowne, which is a major greeting place now, yep. you can get there via transit. They're pushing for the tunnel. Hopefully it'll happen. The feedback has been really positive. But can we build them so that they can accommodate people, please? Yeah. Because if the tunnel is, if, if, the, if the platform's really tiny, and I mean, these platforms are not very wide. They're, no. they're simply no, they're not, not very wide. wide. You've you've seen them, and I'm like, yes. if you compare them to any of the Toronto transit stations okay. or any of the Montreal ones, not only are the Montreal and Toronto one platforms longer, but they're also wider. Now, some mm-hmm. aren't much wider, but they're mm-hmm. a lot longer. Yeah, and you have to understand the platforms here in Ottawa have escalators and then a separate elevator bank, which takes up a lot of the space on the platform. Right. Right. It wasn't built into, you know, into the wall where, or, or a separate, right. no, it's, it takes up platform space and escalators take up a lot of platform space. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it was never designed properly to begin with yep. and it's yep. frustrating me. And now, like I said, on Canada day, they're, they're restricting access to the station, which is right next door to where the Canada day festivities are taking place and you're right right pnc it's true uh it's true um speaking of uh 
transportation. If you happen to be living in uh, BC, BC ferries have warned that their crews are still short-staffed even after uh, following its biggest recruitment drive in years, uh, which means that for the Canada Day long weekend, there could be long waits for those willing to travel or wanting to travel between Vancouver Island and the mainland as one ferry is out of commission and in repairs. Um, Show and go customers are probably the ones that will be the most affected, uh, facing potentially hours of wait to get on a ferry with their vehicle. So it's recommended that you leave your car behind if you can, because getting on the ferry by foot is probably your best way to ensure you travel on the schedule that you would prefer to. Um, The ship under repair is expected to be back in the waters next week. So uh, just a little news uh, out there if you happen to be living in that area. Um, how much time do we have, Mr. Grizzly? As much as you want. I'm working from home today. Okay. I'd like to do a little something here. Uh, because uh, on the weekend, I think last weekend, it was um, Canada's, um, well, the Prime Minister's National Security and Intelligence Advisor, Jody Thomas, gave her first public interview ever. Uh, so not under testimony or anything uh, with CBC, the house. Um, oh, Kit Ellen says, Douglas, there's a new ferry service starting for walk on only. Oh, well, there you go. Good stuff. Good to know. Oh, cool. Um, and uh, she gives an interview uh, on CBC's the house that I really recommend you listen to. Uh, but there are some uh, segments of it that I'd like to play and, and just talk, stop and start and talk about because it's, um, oh, but guys, it's not Portage Lisker, it's Portage Lisker. Portage. Good to know. Thank you, Kit Donna. That's how it's pronounced. I, I did not know. Portage. Portage, Portage okay. in Maine, Portage Lisker, not Portage. Yeah. I asked Portage. It's spelt the same, yes, it's exactly. just pronounced Thank you so much. It's yes, like McKay it's and McKay. Thank you, Donna. I get Donna. Thank you, Kadana. I appreciate that. I'll try to remember that. Um, please uh, offer us another gentle correction if we uh, screwed up again. <laughs> uh, so I'd like to just, there's no uh, visual, uh, there's only audio. Um, but so uh, I'll, I'll stop and start. But um, she says some pretty interesting things that don't get to the main news. Thanks for having me. So much has happened on the watch. Why do you want to talk now? I, well, thank you for that question. It's actually not one that I've been asked. I think it's really important that we talk to Canadians about this country and its national security. And that we, as public servants, um, do a better job at improving the literacy on national security issues. Because we, we've been talking a lot, actually, about mm-hmm. national security, but you're saying there's something that Canadians need to learn? Well, I think that it needs to be a calm conversation that is uh, back and forth where we do as much listening as talking, as opposed to the show that is question period or parliamentary committee. And those all obviously have really important roles in our democracy. And so I'm not being critical of them. But it's a different conversation in those two venues than it is when we're having a a different kind of discussion about what national security is, where Canadians should be concerned, what is actually being done. Are elections safe? I think one of the best ways to do that is to actually get into some of the substance of what has been going on. So let's start there. The Globe and Mail's whistleblower who has leaked significant national security information about foreign interference, driven a big part of this conversation, wrote... It had become increasingly clear that no serious action was being considered. Worse still, evidence of senior public officials ignoring interference was beginning to mount. How troubling is it for you that someone in the security sphere would believe that it is worth going to prison in order to get attention for these issues? It's incredibly disturbing on a number of levels. One, that they would be so unaware of what has been done. That two... They would risk our national security in order to leak information and gain some notoriety. And three, that gain they... Gain some notoriety. I think so. And I think three, uh, leak parts of information that don't tell a complete story, that perhaps looks salacious and scandalous in a headline, 
but don't tell the complete story of what came before that piece of intelligence that was leaked and what's come after it and what the analysis is and what's been done with it. It seems to me that you are suggesting that in a way that there's not any value in what's been leaked. And I, I would look at, for instance, the example of this intelligence analysis that made it known to the public that there had been um, potential foreign surveillance of Michael Chong's family overseas. Like, surely there is public value in taking a closer look at that. It got attention for something that was in many ways ignored at the time. You see, you see no benefit in the conversation that we are having right now. I can't ascribe the word benefit to it, but I do think to leaking. There's no benefit to leaking. I will never concede there's a benefit. There's a benefit to having a conversation and there's a benefit to ensuring that the security agencies are more forthcoming and more forthright with information. I will concede that Michael Chong should have been told that while there was no physical risk to his family, um, there was interest in his family as a result of his work on the Uyghur motion. I will agree with that. Given that we are having a conversation, though, that you acknowledge that we should have been having, I wonder if you still believe that the whistleblower or the leaker, I, I appreciate that both of those words are loaded in different ways. Do you believe that the whistleblower should be found and prosecuted? I do. Absolutely, I do. The law has been broken. Sources, techniques have been put at risk. Our credibility with Five Eyes allies has been put at risk. There are better ways of doing this. Uh, there are better ways of raising your concerns within a national security agency. There are better ways of trying to bring some light to this topic than risking Canada's national security. You believe it should happen? Do you believe it will happen? That the person will be found? I do. Do you have any sense of... I do timeline? not. Okay. Not that I can share. Do you have any sense the person will be found? I do. Very mm -hmm. calmly, yet assertively stated. Oh, yeah. There is no benefit to leaking. She, it's amazing how firm and crystal clear she is without having to get excited or raise voice, or change tone. She impresses me. Now, she took yeah. the position um, two weeks before the convoy started. Mm -hmm. So she was just thrown right in. Um, I highly recommend listening to the interview, the rest of it, uh, because there's lots of details about how information she's saying it's not so much the circulation of information within the agencies, but what happens to it when it goes out. Um, and she makes other, she'll give you as much detail as she can. Um, she seems to be as forthcoming as she can with the details that she can be. Uh, but she mentioned the same thing, you know, David Johnston, she said basically leaned forward as much as he could with the information that was sensitive. She admits that a public inquiry could be possible, yes, but it would require a lot, a lot, a lot of work. And the things that are most interesting to the public are the things that won't be able to be spoken about publicly. And my personal fear, I don't sure if she mentions it, but my personal fear is that that creates then an avenue for everybody who's on the opposition side to then just turn around and say, look, another cover up and which only then feeds the cycle of lessening the confidence in the process. Um, because you know, that's going to happen. There are people that are paid and have a vested interest in saying that line before a process, before anyone's even appointed to supervise that process, that strategy is in the can, whatever the process says, we say it's a cover up. Well, if it's about national security, that makes it way much easier, right? And oh, we can't yeah. talk about that. We can't talk about, oh, what are you covering up? Ah. So um, do take the time. Do take the time to listen to this uh, interview. The, the whole uh, episode pretty much is can it's called uh, Canada's Na Top National Security Chiefs Speak Out. CBC The House, uh, hosted by Catherine Cullen. Uh, there's some stuff uh, at the end of the episode about... Uh, 
the response to passage of BLC 18, which is the Online News Act, which has all the stuff going on with Facebook. But the principal uh, part of this episode are talking with people in uh, in the national security and uh, getting a better idea and uh, getting little bits of information that you uh, about process and how things work that you're not getting on the news so that you can get the fuller picture of how it is possible. Maybe that, you know, yeah, so how is it that the prime minister didn't know this? Or so you might get a little bit of insight uh, into this. Uh, she also uh, assures in the interview that um, there was some uh, some information that did not get out of the agency to the prime minister and all that kind of stuff. But she has seen from herself that when the information did finally get to the prime minister because it got public, that he was immediately seized with it and did take it very, very, very seriously. Now, of course. One is going to say, of course, she has to say that because she's the prime minister's mm. national security and intelligence advisor. Uh, but there's not much in it for her to lie about that. No. Nor is there for our national security apparatus. Uh, you got to trust someone. You got to trust someone. Uh, ooh, Kit James says, leaving Chicago tonight, Black Ball resumes next week, and I will have something big. And big is in all caps. Now I yeah, am I don't know very is. intrigued. I want to know what it's about. Oh, oh, I can't we'll wait. I can't wait. wait until next week. Yes. Um, so please, uh, Kits and Cubs, if you have an opportunity to listen to CBC The House, Canada's top national security chief speak out that episode, uh, do so. Uh, it'll uh, help you uh, navigate what's uh, going on. Uh, Seymour Hirsch and I are about to break a story. Ooh. Again, you're J- James, you're showing a whole bunch of leg. Yes. <laughs> you big tease. You big tease. Um, I think that's... Oh, yes. This is one more thing. Uh, if you are... Uh, looking for some information uh, about wildfires and smoke and all that kind of stuff. Um, CBC News has a climate dashboard on that you can look for specifically that'll help you get information all in one spot. And remember, if you have anybody that's, uh, or know of anybody that's affected and in that area, CBC also has uh, its um, uh, light version, CBC uh, light that uh, people can use uh, as a website that doesn't have as many images and a video and all that kind of stuff so that it's uh, mm-hmm. low bandwidth. So if your battery happens to be low on your cell, that you can go there and still get the have a, you need to keep informed. Or a weak signal, right? Right, or a weak signal. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, just uh, remember to get that information out there. Um, a couple of uh, things that we... Um, something we mentioned yesterday uh, very briefly when we were talking about uh, f- the price of food, uh, Canada Bread, which is the company that used to be uh, owned with by Maple Leaf Foods, they were the mm-hmm. ones that were charged in the bread fixing, the bread price fixing thing. Uh, they had a $50 million fine imposed upon it uh, by the Competition Bureau after it had admitted that it colluded to fid- fix bread prices resulting in price hikes in 2007 and 2011. Uh, one of the reasons this happened is because uh, Maple Leaf Foods doesn't own Canada Bread anymore. It's now Bimbo, uh, which oh, if yeah, you've been to Mexico, yeah, uh, so. you've probably seen Bimbo all over. So they've taken up and I guess they're clearing house. And it's like, yeah, okay, I guess that happened. Um, so uh, they're take a, they're, they can afford, I guess, to take the public accountability because they weren't there at the time mm. that it happened. Right, it wasn't Bimbo that was managing, so they're 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 cleaning it up. Uh, legal expert uh, Jennifer Quaig um, says that it's exceptional to provide for compensation for victims in this type of criminal prosecution because a lot of people are wondering why does that fifty million dollar fine go back to the government rather than to the people? Mm-hmm. Um, because this one specifically is a criminal prosecution, uh, it would be difficult to distribute that cash. Um, you know, who got it? Can you prove it? What not? Uh, a lot of people are calling for it to be donated to a charity, though, or food banks or something of the sort. Um, food banks, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, the difference when people will point to, mm-hmm. well, what about that Keurig thing in 2022? Because Keurig uh, gave $800,000 to an environmental charity for misleading claims that its coffee pots could be recycled. Well, that was a civil case. 
So, so different. Uh, yeah. yeah, civil case. So in civil case, you can sue, sue for those damages. So there are two class action civil cases that are already underway. Uh, I guess Canada bred. So whatever next settlement comes out of that will be the one that people will be able to apply for compensation for having been dinged uh, in the bread uh, price fixing thing. Uh, the con, the, it seems according to the competition bureau, uh, the investigation is still going. So for the people who are wondering how is Western bread not equally guilty, that's probably why. But That'd be a good reason. But we're in 2023, and they're imposing now a $50 million fine for activities that led to prices price hikes in 2007 and 2011. Slow wheels of justice and government, huh? <sighs> These cases are complicated. Exactly. Yeah. And um, we will get enough to pay for a sandwich in between... What, yeah. Whatever the price, whatever compensation you get, whatever its value was in 2007 or 2011 versus today, it's probably relevant. <laughs> you'll, relevant. Be lucky, you'll be lucky to get crumbs. <laughs> I got a couple of quick graphics here I want to put on the screen. Uh, All right. I'm going to start with this one uh, because we've been it's been the topic of discussion for a little while today. Mm -hmm. Conservatives attempting polyvera likability makeover. Uh, he's just spewing out gray smoke <laughs> ditching the glasses may not be enough uh the theomodakis uh, political cartoon which i think is cr pretty great here's here's another one for you uh in regards to the waterloo attack from thomas bollinger three at tom at thomas b-o-l-i-n-g-e-r three replying to Ardith Jean and, and McGilvery. Uh, nobody deserves to be attacked in that situation, but a gender studies class, this is all caps, so he's yelling. Multiple question marks behind that statement. A gender studies class? Come on, there are two genders and we all know how they work. Teach, teach these kids something useful. Pretty clear why someone was pissed. It's kind of like saying in his own way they deserved it. I mean, I, you know, it's conjecture. It's, the very existence of a gender studies class, because there are only two, and I guess all we need to know is how many there are. Yeah. It, we don't have to study throughout the years how it's evolved, I guess how like things it, can get better for the future. How we Tell can, me you're an just, ignorant prick without telling me you're ignorant, you know. <laughs> and, and, then, and, then, and then turning around and saying like, well, gee, it's completely understandable. This reaction is perfectly a reaction. This reaction to the fact that a gender studies class actually exists. Well, gee, it's perfectly understandable. I'm not saying and that have, this is they've I, existed for a long time. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not saying that they deserve this, but yeah. it is completely reasonable and normal that the very existence of someone of this type of class would trigger someone to the point of wanting to attempt to take people's. No, it's so in other not. words, that that thing that you led with, everything that came before the but, means mm -hmm. nothing. Yeah, means nothing. Means nothing. I have another one there's here. No, I want to post. Well, no, maybe I'll, I'll save that for later. <laughs> Sorry. Um, we should start wrapping up because uh, we're hitting the two hour mark, and we usually like to wrap up around the two hour mark yeah. on a Friday. You said yes. I have a. I have a yeah, I have one more graphic I want to put on the screen here. Joe put this together, and I thought it was cute and funny, so I kept a copy of it. And I meant to talk about it earlier, and I just got sidetracked. Uh, so I'm going to, before I show, yeah, I'll show this, and then I'll mention something else. So this is uh, from Joe, uh, the de-beardification. Mm. <laughs> the various stages in the evolution or the de-evolution of the beard uh, that led to the great shave of 2023. And I think we raised somewhere in the neighborhood of $2,000. So Yay. thanks to everybody who, who took part in my looking like an idiot for uh, uh, two weeks uh, and how we were able to raise some uh, money for a very worthwhile and worthy cause. Yay. And the last thing I wanted to mention uh, was yesterday, uh, the title of the show was I'm Deeply, Deeply Shallow. And you noticed it was in quotation marks. It was because it was a conversation I had with my cousin Douglas um, the other day. We haven't spoken in some time. He's He's been going through some, some things, like as we all do as we get a little bit older. We're the same age. And uh, we're, we're having a conversation about stuff. And he says, oh, Paul, I am deeply, deeply shallow. And I thought I was going to piss myself laughing. <laughs> I'm deeply, deeply shallow. Like <laughs> you get the double on time there. How... 
huh? You can't. Like, that's the funny part of it, right? <laughs> he's got a wicked sense of humor and one of the funniest people you'll, you'll ever meet. He's, he's quite fabulous. You'd love him to death. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I got to give him a call later today and I got to reach out. I got to reach out to four people today. Holy crap. Mm. I've got a busy day ahead of me, let alone the, all the work and the production and editing and stuff. I got a lot of stuff to do. One more week, four more days, because Monday is a holiday. Uh, thank goodness for the Canada Day weekend. Um, we will be going live tomorrow uh, from three to five. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to try and get some footage. If you can get some footage, we'll see what we can do. Like, I'll be able to get the footage. I don't know if I'll be able to have the time to get it loaded yeah. so we can debut it on the show or not. But I'll see what we can do. Because I, I have a brunch I have to go to in the morning. And then uh, I got to get there for around two to set up for three uh, well, and I don't, I, I don't know if I'm going to go full production mode. I might just bring a little bit less equipment because well, it's only a two hour show. Yep. So, you know, I'll go a little bit lighter. I think, <coughs> excuse me, sorry about that. I think I'll just uh, bring uh, two mics, one for you, one for me. And if anybody wants to jump in, they can borrow a mic from us from time to time, just because it's, uh, it's a lot, it's a lot to set up for the podcast. And, you know, if we're doing four or five hours, no problem. I'll bring the full production suite. But I think for, for a, a two hour show, uh, light production. I'm not going to, I'm not going to go full hardcore unless people want to join us in advance and tell us. So then I'll bring the full production suite. Mm. But, uh, unless I hear otherwise, we'll just go with a lightweight production for the day because it's only, like I said, it's a two hour show. It's not, it's not the full in depth because it's Canada day. And I think a lot of people, although people will want to tune in, I know that. And thank you. We appreciate that. You don't want to sit there for four or five hours on Canada Day watching us when you could be out at a barbecue or, you know, watching fireworks or doing what you do on Canada Day. Mm -hmm. So anyway, that is that. There you go. There you go. All right. And I'm looking forward to that because other than my birthday, it's my favorite day of the year. And since I am mm -hmm. a beaver, well, Canada Day probably is my birthday too. <laughs> All right, kids. Uh, I think uh, we have a show. Uh, thank you, uh, for your patience. Uh, this one's, uh, was a little less organized, uh, than usual. Uh, so, uh, thank you so much for being patient and understanding with the fact that I didn't have time to prepare as I normally do by virtue of the fact I was ill. Um, to all of you who had been, uh, I know you're not going to hear this until you actually hear this on the download for those of you, but, uh, yes, I apologize also for yesterday's show not getting out yesterday um nothing happened <laughs> afterwards <laughs> so just <laughs> i took some time to be kind to and gentle with myself so uh hopefully we'll get uh, both episodes out uh, for the download today all right Absolutely. um but but thank you for your patience uh we really do appreciate it um kits that's the end of this episode of the daily beaver podcast we hope you love listening to us because we love making this for you remember that uh, sharing is caring and word of mouth is priceless so let your peeps know about us because democracy is something that you do um get out and celebrate tomorrow i know and, and i know that not everyone particularly within our indigenous right. community feels the same about canada day mm -hmm. um we get understand. It. We get it. We get it. We get it. Um, I've, I've actually been chastised for loving it as much as I do. They're like, how can you? And I go, because I'm celebrating the fact that there are millions of people that come here and make a home and a life for themselves and that we are striving to do and be better all the time. Yeah. It's a, it's a secular me, day. Yeah. For me, it's just, you know, each one of our relationships to the nation is different. It oh, yeah. just is. We have different pasts. We have different backgrounds. We, we, we all come from different places. Um, mine, I'm happy to say, is good. Mm -hmm. So I, I love my country, but that doesn't mean I can't sit there and can't understand that you may be coming from a different place. Exactly. And I can respect that. And I have room for that because this is Canada. Heck, if we've got room for a separatist party in our House of Commons, because we can admit that even though most of us are not separatists, Separatism, done legally and in an orderly fashion, is a viable political point of view, even though we don't subscribe to it. Certainly, we can make room for the fact that, you know, people whose religion, who, their whose family's entire relationship with the nation mm -hmm. has been marred by, or painted with cruelty and. Mm -hmm sadness and loss and you know 
more struggle than there should have been. All of the things, as the saying goes. All of the things. Right? I can make room for that. I can understand that. I can understand that. Uh, but for me, um, I love this place. Um, so uh, I will be, uh, and like you, I'm so proud to be Canadian that a lot of people say, you know, you need to tone that down because I think it's illegal to be that proud in six provinces in one territory. <laughs> I think we have laws against <laughs> that. <laughs> Pipe it down. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to be having a, a, a wonderful time. I always love Canada Day, particularly in the nation's capital. Um, if you've never been here for it, if, you know, it I, I know I know it's late to get here for this year, this year. but but maybe next year we can try and organize a rally of, of the kits and cubs to come up for Canada oh. day. And, because it, it really is, if you've never experienced Canada day in Ottawa, you've never truly fully experienced Canada day. You haven't. It, 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 it is the biggest party in the country and we go all out for it. On and it's a day, marathon. It's the biggest party in the world. Yeah. It's a marathon. It is a marathon, and if you can, and if you can run the whole marathon, like congratulations, you're one of us. It's not <laughs> easy, but but if we, you know, maybe maybe we'll let's let, let's see, maybe we'll work on putting something together for next year Canada Day. This just exactly. popped into my head now in real time, so it's like maybe next year we can try and organize a a gathering of the clan, if you will. Oh, maybe that's a better mm. gathering of the clan. Well, Scottish clans from the Highlands. Okay. I know, I know. <laughs> Gathering of the the kids and cubs next year. For those who want to make it to Ottawa, we can uh, we can arrange for uh, try and help you arrange hotels and, and that sort of thing. I mean, I can try. I don't know if I'll be you know, successful at it, but uh, I can't let anybody stay with me because my girlfriend will be here, and that's just one my one bedroom apartment. So, you know. but <laughs> there's room in the bathtub. I suppose if you're tiny. <laughs> if you really like this podcast, you can find us on the Cryer Media Network, as well as all Beaver Grizzly friendly platforms. Uh, ciao to whoever's listening to us in Italy. Mm, we um, have, we're still on, we're on the charts in Italy. I don't. We're still in the charts in Italy. We had a little pop on the, the charts strange. in Hungary and uh, uh, and some in France recently as well. Um, so yeah, we're going global. But uh, yeah, in Italy, uh, we seem to have been on the charts for like a solid straight week. So whoever's listening to us in Italy. Thanks. Yeah. Ciao, bello. Ciao, bella. <laughs> uh, if you like this podcast, uh, like I said, you can find us on all the Griever, Beaver Grizzly platforms. Stars and reviews are appreciated if you're listening to us on Apple. We love to hear from you. Reach us on our Facebook at True North Eager Beaver, our Twitter feed at True Eager, or by email at truenorthegerbeaver.gmail.com. You can subscribe to us via our pod page, podpage.com slash the True North Eager Beaver, lowercase letters with a hyphen between each one of those words. Why not also subscribe to our True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated YouTube channel? That helps us out big time. Make like Kit Elaine and smash those buttons, the subscribe and the like button for this episode, please. We appreciate that very much. We can't do this without your kind and generous support. So you feel that we've done a particularly good show uh, today or this week, or if you're feeling sorry for me. <laughs> hey. I, I will work the corner. <laughs> um, please uh, go to coffee, ko-fi.com slash eager beaver. And uh, that's where you can make your donation. Or if you uh, scan that little squiggly by Mr. Grizzly's head there, that will bring you to our emergency fund. Um, today we're uh, buying Gatorade. So... <laughs> <laughs> and, and mint tea as opposed to uh, Caesar and uh, <laughs> and hot chocolate. And finally, uh, from the Beaver Lodge, this is your eager beaver saying, until next time, dear kids, it can be a tough world out there. Oh, boy. Uh, please be kind to and gentle with yourself. Mr. Grizzly, do you have some words of wisdom, please? On this uh, Canada Day weekend, the, the my favorite day of the year, the biggest party in the country, um, get out and celebrate in the manner that you feel that suits you best. But uh, I'm going to give you the, the piece of advice that I always give out at this time of the year. If you're going to be out in the sun drinking uh, adult beverages, make sure you're, you're compensating with water and or a, um, 
uh, electrolyte type beverage to keep you hydrated because uh, it can be quite hot on Canada Day throughout the country. July 1st is ten- tends to be one of the hotter days of the year. For every and, potent drink, have a drink of the other kind. Correct. And if you are drinking, please don't get behind the wheel. Please. Mm. Please don't do that. I mean, yeah. I can't tell you what to do. You're an adult. You're going to make your own decisions. But uh, please make an informed decision. Getting behind the wheel after consuming alcoholic beverages is not good for anyone, period. Yep. Yeah. And, and, you know, Canada Day is supposed to be fun and happy memories. Yes. Let's not make sad ones. Yeah. I agree. I agree. I agree. All right. Mr. Grizzly, please roll them credits. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver media podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, the Miss V Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community and forum. And The Peppermaster, hot pepper sauces made from fresh farm ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. Ah, I just want to give a little shout out to Kit Plain Power, who joined us right at the end. Say, have a great Canada Day weekend now to rewind and watch. Thank you so much. And um, Thanks a lot. Eh? Yeah. And uh, we have to say happy early birthday to Kit Jen. To Jen. It's tomorrow. So um, given that Kit Jen was really nice to me for my birthday, I prepared a little something. Oh. Yes. Yes. You remember JFK when it was his birthday? Marilyn Monroe. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. It's my only hit. I have to make it last. Happy birthday, my lovely, lush product sending caver beaver show watching friend jen happy birthday to you <laughs> and we'll probably do that again tomorrow when we go live from the pub <laughs> oh oh happy birthday to canada <laughs> I love you all so much. You are so, 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 so good to me and us. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful week. Thanks, Bye. Take care.